Linda and today we're going to be making croissants. There are many different flavors of croissants and I'll be making three out of that. So the first one which I'm going to be making is a Zartar croissant so probably that will have Zartar filling inside the croissant. Then the second one is going to be a strawberry croissant and I'll be putting strawberry jam inside that. And the third one is going to be a chocolate croissant so that will have chocolate inside it. And I'm going to make these without oven. So if you don't have an oven at home, don't worry, we'll make this without oven. So without any further ado, let's make these croissants. The ingredients that we'll need for making these delicious croissants will be 3 cups of all-purpose flour 1 cup of milk, make sure the milk is warm 150 grams of softened butter 1 fourth cup plus 1 tablespoon of sugar 3 teaspoons of yeast and half a teaspoon of salt First, into a large mixing bowl, add in the sugar yeast and the milk give that a mix make sure you don't over mix or else the yeast won't bloom and set this mixture aside for 10 minutes now the yeast has bloomed well give that a small mix and set that aside then into a mixer add in all the flour 50 grams of the butter and save the rest for later along with the salt now start running the mixer and slowly pour in the yeast mixture once your dough has kneaded well open up the mixer and take the dough aside then into your work area sprinkle some flour and start kneading the dough. You don't have to knead it too much, just until all that flour is incorporated. Now the dough is kneaded well and it no more sticks to my hand and you know that the dough is perfect. Then into the same flour bowl, brush some butter and place your dough. Again brush some more butter on top of it so that it does not stick. Then cover this with a piece of plastic wrap and set this aside for 1 hour or until it rises very well. One tip is to make sure that you don't keep your dough for too long because we have a lot of yeast in this and it will rise too much. Now my dough has risen very well. It just took half an hour for me. So make sure you don't keep it more than 1 hour, maximum 1 hour. Let's just take out the dough. And just make it into a perfect ball. You just don't have to knead it. Now it's into a perfect ball. And let's just cut it into half. I'm using a bench scraper for this. And again cut these into halves. And you have to repeat the same thing again and again. So again make a ball of that and cut that into half. Again make balls out of these and again cut them into half. Now I've repeated the same thing with all of that dough and I've got 12 balls, 12 perfect shaped balls and each ball is a little bit more smaller than my palm but it won't be the same for you because my palm is small then take each ball and start rolling it make it as thin as possible and sorry for the blurring of the camera that's because of the moment of the rolling pin Once you've rolled it nicely thin and then take any perfectly round shaped thing, press that down and cut off the excess and make sure you don't throw the excess dough because we're going to use it later. So you keep all the excess of the rest of the balls. 
and again roll that a little bit more to even up the sides and again I'm so sorry for the blurring of the camera then brush up a very generous amount of butter on top of the dough very generous means very generous you need a lot of butter so that your layers are seen well lift this and keep this on top of a piece of plastic wrap and again do the same thing with all your balls start rolling it cut the excess and again make sure you save the excess because we're going to make this into a bigger ball again roll it a little bit more and brush some more butter on top of that and now what you do you have to stack this on top of the previous layer and you have to go on doing this with all your balls now I've reached the final dough and this is not any final ball this is the excess of all those doughs so just knead that well to incorporate everything in so as you can see it's a bit more um, bigger than the other balls so this is gonna be the top layer because the top layer will cover all of that then roll that into a big sheet and you don't have to shape that up with any rounded shape thing now place this on top of your stacked layers of the butter and the dough press it down the edges and then trim off the edge and push that end in push it properly and then place a plastic wrap on top and cover it perfectly you don't want any small piece coming out or else that part will get dried out now let's pop this in the refrigerator for around half an hour so that the butter gets stiffened up after half an hour let's open up the plastic wrap and at this point if you see the down layer is gonna be very sticky so if you start rolling it right now it will stick to your work area and it will make a big mess so always make sure that you dust it with a little bit of flour and then start rolling it and this time you don't have to make it too thin you need at least a little bit thickness or else the layers won't be seen Now we have to keep on rolling this dough until you have a big sheet of rolled out dough. And try to make it as perfect in shape as possible. And I'm not showing everything in too much detail. That's because the length of the video is going too far. now I've rolled out the dough you can see the thickness it's pretty thick and it's also very large so now I've made a seam through the middle so that I can know which is the middle let's cut through it and the best thing to use for this is a pizza cutter because as we're going on we can roll it out Cut that properly and then here I'll use a measuring tape we're gonna cut this piece into three parts because you don't want such a big dough 
you want it in the shape of a triangle let's cut that out and do the same thing with our rest of the rolled out dough now I have a piece of triangle over here the dough let's just flip that over because that's a side that's gonna look good and which should be outside let's just roll that out a little bit and then make a cut on the top part now place the filling first I'm gonna make the chocolate one and then you just have to roll that out in the same way now let's keep this aside in the refrigerator until we make the rest of our croissants now I have the second piece of triangle again let's flip that over because that's a side that's gonna look back Now I have zaatar filling over here. This is easily available in most of the markets. This is usually found in powder form. So you are basically supposed to add some olive oil into it. As we are making croissants, make sure you add very little bit of olive oil or else the oil will flow out which we don't want. And again repeat the same thing. Make a split and you just have to start rolling that. Again, let's keep this in the refrigerator. Take another piece, flip that over and roll it out. Make a split on the top. And now I'm going to make the strawberry one. So I have some strawberry jam. Again, let's just roll that out. Let's keep this also in the refrigerator until we make the rest of it. Now I've made a bunch more of these and these are gonna go right into the oven because when we're making it in that pan it's not always gonna look good but it's gonna taste perfect. So I'm keeping these in the oven so that I can click good photos. Now um, I have a baking tray I've lined it with a little bit of parchment paper and greased it with some oil. On top of that I've kept my croissants have some egg wash and let's wash the croissants with the egg and I washed all of them with eggs now we have a pan over here with a very little amount of salt and a support on top make sure you never give the heat directly or else there are chances of the croissants to get burnt so now let's preheat this and then we're gonna place in the croissants for 10 to 20 minutes on low to medium And make sure you close the lid. Now once that's baked, let's open up the lid. And as I said, the shape of it is not that perfect. But that's fine, it's gonna taste perfect. Now it's pretty hot at this point, so once that cools down, I'll cut into it and show you how that looks in the inside and all those layers. Now that's cooled down, let me just show you can see the layers even outside and also inside it's very soft thank you so much for watching hope you liked it and if you did please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up down below and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and click the notification bell so that you know when i come up with a new recipe thanks once again and bye bye